It's the foundation of the Citizen Army. Discontent had lighted a blazing campfire in Dublin. The ruddy light of the flame was reflected by an earnest and ominous glow in the face of every Dublin worker. Men, full of the fire of battle, thronged in dense masses the wide expanse of area facing Liberty Hall. The city was surging with a passion full, daring and fiercely expectant. A passion strange, enjoyable, which it had never felt before with such intensity and emotion. The workers were exuberantly confident that the unparalleled spread of the sympathetic strike would overthrow the moneyed hosts of Midium. The eager, toil-worn, care-lined faces of the workers now turned with concentrated uneasy patience towards the window on the left-hand side of Liberty Hall, waiting for it to be raised, that they might listen to this nightly message of hope progress and encouragement from those leaders whom they were convinced would guide them safely to the heavy ordeal that each man must share, that there might be preserved to all the elemental right of the workers to choose their union and to follow the leaders in whom alone they place their whole confidence and trust. Suddenly the window is raised and the tense, anxious feelings of the men crowded together burst out into enthusiastic and full-throated cheer that shatters the surrounding air and sends up into the skies a screaming flock of gulls that had been peacefully drifting along the sombre surface of the river Liffey. Louder still swells the resonant shout as Jim Larkin appears at the window with an animated flush of human pride on his strong and rugged face as he brushes back from his broad forehead the waving tufts of dark hair that are here and there silvered by the mellowing influence of time and the inexorable force of issuing energy from the human structure. Again the cheers ring out and Larkin quietly waits until the effort of demonstrating their confidence and affection will give place to the lustful dire to hear what he has to say. Hope, ruddy flame, was leaping in their hearts. This day would be an historic one in the unhappy annals of the Irish labour movement. Perhaps this lovely autumn sunset would be followed by the dawn of their social emancipation. And the lusty cheers died away to a droning echo, which was followed for a few moments by a silence that was strangely sincere. And then, with a sweeping gesture of his arm that seemed to pass over around the tremendous gathering and make them one with himself in thought and hope and action, Jim Larkin began to speak. In rugged, passionate, vitalizing phrases, he told them that they were engaged in the fight of their lives that every conceivable combination, combination had united its forces against the workers. And it would be a long and bitter fight between the titans of capital and the titans of labor. Therefore, the workers must become disciplined, organized, made of the one stuff in thought and action. So that in all they would essay to do for themselves, there would be a spontaneous unity and pressure and a hardened and impenetrable unity of resistance. Mm.